It's like a Cinnabon covered in a sugar glaze, except it's just boring water. Good morning, folks. Can you see me? Is it too dark? Oh, not too so bright. It's day 31, and uh, I guess yesterday the weather forecast said it was going to stop raining around 1 a.m. and be sunny today. And can you hear it? Let's just see outside here. It's been raining steadily all night. So I'm glad we stayed in the shelter. It's, uh, Let's hope it stops soon, but uh, we're going to go on. It's a 15.5 mile day, about 3,800 feet to gain. Should be it's about the same as yesterday, but uh, hopefully less rain today. Hello, I'm holding a GoPro under the umbrella so it doesn't get wet. Although I guess it's a GoPro style. I'll hold it out here, but uh, it's raining again this morning. It's still raining rather. I'm just leaving the cabin or the shelter right here. It's the shelter's name is like John something cabin shelter. So, but anyway, we got a bunch of climb up here in the morning, and then I think I'm gonna do something different again tomorrow. Tonight, uh, it's just a 5.15.5 mile day. Stay at a shelter. I don't know if I'll stay inside. Depends on the weather. It's supposed to get better, but I think tomorrow I'm just gonna go five miles and then head into a hostel um, that's near that five mile marker. They'll pick up from there, but. I keep trying to tell myself I'm supposed to be taking it easy on this trail. That's why I picked the AT because there's a lot of outs and every two or three days you can get out. But then I keep doing these like four or five night stretches and then I keep pushing hard on them and I'm supposed to be taking it easy on this trail. There's a lot of new subscribers so in case you didn't know it's um, I think uh, early last year. I found out I had polycystic kidney disease and it just these giant cysts grow on your kidneys and basically reduces its function and its lifespan basically and uh, I chose this trail to do because I figured there were a lot of outs and I could take breaks down then I could do less miles per day so I don't have to stress my kidneys as much so I don't kill them by the end of this through hike Plus there's a lot of water. Dehydration is really bad for it, for them. But yeah, I have to keep reminding myself that, but I forget and I keep doing 16s and I don't know. So I think I'm gonna get out tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, maybe around by noon and uh, just warm up somewhere. Supposedly they have a heated garage with drying racks. So I'm gonna dry out all my stuff there and be nice and just relax for one day take off do one overnight and then go to Johnny's the next night there that way I don't have to do a zero I could just take a break be out in the woods for another day or two take another break so I don't have to like push four nights get a zero push four nights take a zero take it easy you know I keep forgetting that oh yeah by the way the cysts on my kidneys are uh I have many but uh each one has at least one that's five centimeters and five centimeters is huge but it's raining and my gopro is getting wet so i'm gonna put this away and i'll talk to you later so i guess the place i was planning on staying at or trying to stay at isn't open uh yet and there's another spot nearby but they're not open until march 1st either so a couple more days oh well i guess four nights out straight into Irwin. but check out this rock i see uh, i see right in front of me it's mostly flat around here and it just juts out. Isn't that crazy? And there's a big crack down the middle. I always wonder like how do these giant boulders just pop out of nowhere? I know they were all filled in with dirt and everything years and you know millions of years ago and the dirt eroded. But these two, there is another one here though off the side but these two are the crazy ones and it's split right down the middle. Hmm. They always kind of like fantasize what caused the split, you know? It's probably just weather, water, ice, but like an earthquake or meteor or something nearby. That'd be cool. That's pretty wild. I just saw this little, it looked like a gravestone. Checked it out. Howard Bassett, age 83, of Connecticut, died November 9th, 1987. 
Hike AT 1968. Ashes on the spot. April 1988. 20 years after he hiked the AT. <laughs> That's pretty wild. They lived in Connecticut. And then I guess in his will he had people drop off his ashes here of all places. This random high point in North Carolina. I wonder what what was so special about this spot that he wanted his ashes here? But well, quite interesting, quite interesting. I was curious how well these leaves are stuck, but they're really, they're really on there. How hard do I have to pull? Oh my goodness. What? That's how hard they're stuck against the base. Oh, this one has some ice. Wow, I thought they would just pop right off. No wonder why they're still on these branches. They are really on there. Feels like they're on there harder than normal leaves are. Let's try another one. It's raining. Oh, that one popped right off. Weird. There's a whole bunch of these around here. Looks like fall. Fall rain and fog. Oh, there's an intersection. We're heading up to the Big Butt, and this is the Big Butt Bypass. Blue Blaze. But this one's a really short bypass. My right ankle feels much better. It's weird. Sometimes in the afternoon, certain parts will feel weird. But by the next morning, everything's good, and I'm not tired. So let's do this thing. It's also a very, very short uh, bypass and up and over, I guess. Uh oh. Pretty tight for an umbrella. No way that's gonna work. All right, I'm gonna have to fold up the umbrella for a sec here. Yep, that's a lot of rocks, all right. I'm not sure which way it goes. I think it goes over the right. Maybe? Maybe it goes straight ahead and then veers right. We'll see. Can you see it? Should be a little spider web going across. It's actually quite a thick one. But I wonder how long it's been here. I think they put it up last night. Just one web. Up here it's very obvious. And then you see it kind of looping down. Oh, something broke it. Did I touch it? Look at that. Pretty foggy, huh? I don't know, sometimes it looks like the camera makes it less foggy. It's foggy. And still drizzling. We just made it over the big climb of the day, big butt rock I guess and uh, we're heading down and then everything is muddy muddy and waterlogged <laughs> it's, it's pretty pretty wet but two more nights out and we'll be warm at you know I can never remember these names Big Johnny's or Johnny's I forget but I hear they got a new roof on recently and everything looks really nice with all the rain whoo it must have been a tough roofing job. But I checked the weather earlier and it said at 11 o'clock it's supposed to be sunny for the rest. Well, 11 o'clock it's gonna stop raining and it's gonna be cloudy for the rest of the day. But tomorrow it's supposed to be sunny. Like not even partly cloudy, sunny, full on sun. I find that hard to believe, but uh, I'm gonna hope for it. I think it'd be really nice and I'm gonna dress in the morning for that. It's gonna be a long day, so it's gonna be a really nice, pleasant day, I think. Check out this tree. It goes way over the trail on these rocks. Beautiful part of trail. There's a white blaze on the rock over there. I think it's gonna stop raining soon, so I thought I'd show you a few things with my umbrella. Like, people ask, like, what do you do with all the bushes and branches that get in the way? Sometimes the trees are really narrow. Big thing is, the way I set it up on my shoulder strap, it leans to the right. So I tend to lean like this if there are bushes in the way. But if it's too narrow, what I do is I shake it and I just collapse the very top part like that. Then I walk through the bushes and then once I'm out, push it back up. That's all I do. Big thing is you got to shake it a little first before you do this. Otherwise it drips all over your shoulders and stuff. I guess I could walk like this for a while. Do you guys remember who Mushmouth is and uh, <laughs> Fat Albert? <laughs> uh, I don't know if they could sell that show anymore. But anyway, that's basically it. I just pop it up and then pop it down. Easy. 
and I'll show you how I hook it onto my shoulder strap right here. I know how well you can see on the Z packs, there's a loop up here. So I put one of these shock cord loops in the top and I just tighten that up. I don't tighten it super tight because I find if, it, if it's too tight, it digs into my clavicle. And down low, there's another shock cord that just loop through. The z Pax is nice. They have several loops sewn in on the shoulder strap, so you can just tie it in there. And then uh, I take this and I actually tie it to this, and that keeps it from sliding down at all. And it still gives it some... The shock cord's nice because it gives it some absor absorbing power, and it also keeps it from spinning too much. But that's basically it. I just tie it off, and it stays pretty well put. I do wish it could lean closer to my head so it can get my left shoulder more. But overall, this is it. And this does look silly when I do this. But that's how I, that's how I walk through the bushes. Yeah. <laughs> is it sticking out? It's still sticking out quite a bit, but better than that. I felt like it was getting colder as I came down. I noticed my umbrella was freezing, but all these drops are freezing too. It's that same thing where like raindrops on the leaves are frozen in time. Isn't that crazy? They just drop. They're just they're just frozen, just like that. They're gonna drip and then they just froze. I don't know if the cold just came in suddenly or what, but it just leaf is covered in ice. See the ice cracking? Just covered in ice. It's pretty wild. Kind of cold out right now. Everything's just frozen. That explains why things aren't dripping off the trees. Yeah. But the rain's still going though. My umbrella's gonna get really heavy. I'm surrounded by these beech trees and it's quite beautiful. These are creamy colored. Some are slightly golden. It's, it's around this whole area. They're all so short. I guess they're all new. They're everywhere. It's quite beautiful. I wonder what they look like when the sun's hitting them. In the fog, they look nice because it gives it some color from the just bland whiteness, <laughs> grayness. But uh, once the sun's hitting them, I bet they're amazing. Like fall here. Hmm. Maybe, maybe tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow we'll get to see some. Be nice. When have you seen an umbrella this crusty? It's, it's like a Cinnabon covered in a sugar glaze, except it's just boring water. But the umbrella was getting heavier and heavier and I felt it creaking more, so I thought I'd take it off. It seems to have stopped raining, but I'm gonna have to flake off a lot of ice from this guy to make it lighter. But it is just, <laughs> it is, See all the pieces? It is coated. Wow, look at this. It's a huge sheet right here. Let's see if I can do this. Oh my gosh. Huge sheets of ice. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I've never seen an umbrella like this before. Oh my gosh. Sorry about the shaky camera work. Alright, I'm going to put the camera away and focus on de-icing. De-icing this monster. The plan I had was tomorrow I was going to go to a hostel. Maybe after five miles in and then continue the rest of the trip after that. But they're closed. I guess, you know, it's still early in the season so some places aren't open yet. So, I decided so we're going to go in Irwin. And then Pazzi came to this shelter and we discussed it and he was ready to go too. He was freezing. 
Um, he was wet through because of his rain jacket and with the cold he was not doing well. So he was ready to go too and I was ready to go so we contacted a bunch of shuttles and we got it set up 240. We're gonna get picked up and then dropped off at the Super 8 at Irwin and then get warm. It's just been wet cold and he is wet too. He took off his rain jacket and his shirt just soaked shoulders, arms. Um, I'm actually doing okay wet wise. I'm not wet at all. Power to the umbrella except the left arm. That's always getting wet. But the umbrella really helps. But I'm still pretty cold and it still fits into my idea. I keep telling myself like I said I would do the AT because there are a lot of outs so I can take it easy on this trail and not do four nights out at a time like that. So I gotta keep reminding myself. But it's a pretty easy 2.4 mile hike to the Gap. We're going to Devil's Fork Gap and then to a ride to 240. So I'll see you at the Gap or Super 8. We'll see. Kind of exciting. They got a bull jingles there. I haven't been to one in a long time. I can't remember. I think I went to one when I was stationed in North Carolina. Can't remember though. Only one way to really remember how it tastes. Hello, I'm at Super 8. It's pretty nice. It's $60 plus tax for one night for hikers. And it's uh, it's definitely cheaper to call directly instead of like go through booking or something like that. But two beds and check out this picture they have here. I don't know if you can see right now. See it? The, it's the beach trees I've been going on about. It's funny that they, in my room there's a picture of it. At least I think that's what it is. It looks like the leaves. Maybe I'm wrong. But I got here. First thing I do is actually I'll, I talk to my girlfriend because she lives in Germany and she's six hours ahead. So I don't want her to like stay up late um, waiting for me to call her. So I talked to her. Then um, brother hiker Pazzi and I, we walked down to the grocery store and just picked up some snacks for tonight and like a salad and stuff. And um, went to Pals. There's like a burger place right there. I've never heard of them. But I got the double patty burger, super delicious. I'm happy with it. Heater's turning on. And I've just been eating and that's it. So I haven't even showered yet. I'm not gonna do laundry today because we're gonna be back in Irwin two days from now and I'll just do laundry then. But I thought I'd show you my pants. Like I am super hobo-y. Here, check it out. This is how I walked around town, just covered in mud. The other sides, the other sides maybe yeah, it's a little worse actually, but that's me. And it reminds me to tell you that just like socks, if your pants are that muddy, like I'll zip off the bottom. I'm going to, I'll hand wash them. In fact, I'm going to do it now just to get all the mud off and hang it in front of the dryer before, um, before it gets too late. Just so it dries before tomorrow morning. I'm also going to hand dry my hand wash my socks and then, and then that's it really. I'm going to work on some videos and just uh, relax for a little bit, but I got a shower and still getting kind of cold. This is my base layer, by the way. It's on, I think it's like a 32 degree or Elementex Merino wool. It's pretty nice. It's comfy. It's, uh, I've been wearing this quite a bit actually, so I don't know. I really want to send something home later within the next couple of weeks, but I don't know what. Micro spikes first. I can't wait to get rid of those. All right, I'm going to go shower. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Here at the hotel, I thought I'd just mention my latest gear issues. This, uh, the z packs are called the waist pocket seem to be tearing at the, the elastic part there at the top. I noticed that before, but it's actually gotten much worse pretty quickly. Um, and it's happening on both sides. I'm gonna have to stitch it up somehow and seal it up. But I also, this also happened uh, earlier when we were getting out of the car. This happened during the shuttle. Now this metal clasp, I don't know how if you can see it very well, it's supposed to hook onto a little loop in the hip belt, but the metal clasp bent. It's uh, no longer functional. So I'm gonna have to just use some string and tie it to the loop. 
The original, maybe two or three years ago, they just used a piece of string, but they use these metal loops now. At first I thought that was gonna be nicer, but um, a couple of times they did slide out on me, and this time it's bent for good, so it is no longer of any use. I have to fix that. But these elastic parts I need to fix first, I think. Lots of fixing. I also sustained an injury recently. See my nose right there? That happened because my headlamp. <laughs> I accidentally like swung it down and whacked me in the nose hard. Now there's like a little lump that's discolored. Dangerous headlamp, watch out. Thank goodness it's ultralight, otherwise it would have broken my nose. Oh.